Now that we have an in-depth understanding of the JavaScript runtime, as well as how JavaScript executes within the browser, it is now time to dive deeper into event listeners and events within the browser and how we can utilize those to build some really awesome JavaScript applications. Let's do a quick review of what was in the last video just to make sure that we're all on the same page. If you have not watched the JavaScript event loop video where you learn about how JavaScript executes in a browser and the importance of the event loop and how it functions, make sure you go back and watch that video. It's extremely important that you understand it and you understand it well. And I'm going to run through it briefly right here, which is not enough, so make sure you go watch that video. All right, so in that video, we learned about the JavaScript runtime and the heap in the call stack. We learned about the web API and all the functionality that is provided by the browser, as well as our callback queue and the event loop. So a quick overview and a quick reminder of how this all works. The web, the web API provides us a lot of the functionality that we have when we're writing JavaScript for the browser. In other words, it provides us the DOM or the document object model, provides us all of the JavaScript global functions and objects that were provided, and then also provides us the ability to handle events that users or the document kick off, and it allows us to handle those asynchronously. So the web API handles and provides us the ability to handle asynchronous events that are caused by input or output. The callback queue is just a queue or a list that holds all of the event listeners that are ready to be processed by the call stack when an asynchronous event is returned by the I.O. event that happened that the web API is handling. In other words, for example, I guess we should say, when we make an asynchronous call to a web API trying to get some JSON data, that event is handled by our web API and as long as an event listener is provided, the web API will watch and listen and wait for a response from wherever we are getting that data. So whatever web server we have asked, it'll sit and wait for that to happen. Once we get that resolved, either the web request succeeded and we got some data back or else it failed and we have an error, what will happen then is the web API will take that event handler or event listener that it has waiting for that asynchronous call, it will then put it onto the call back queue and pass it the error and or the data we got back from the web server. And it'll sit here in this queue waiting for its turn to be placed onto the call stack once the stack is emptied out. And the event loop, it's 100% responsible for watching the call stack, waiting for it to empty out. Once it's empty, it then checks the callback queue to see if there are any event listeners that need to be processed. And it will pull the first one in the list and push it onto the call stack so that it can be executed by the JavaScript runtime. So that's the high level overview of how events work inside of a browser. And it requires all of these components for events to be handled. Now this is how the system handles it or how the browser handles it. But the reality is as a software engineer, as long as we understand this, act the actual writing of code that handles events is actually quite simple compared to this. And it's because of all this complexity that we have the ability to write event handlers and have it be as simple as it is in JavaScript. So now let's jump into how events happen in the browser when we're just talking about code and what kind of events we can handle. So browser events is what we're going to focus on right now. And really, in the browser, the majority of JavaScript events that occur all happen around the document. So we can think of our HTML document right here. We'll just go ahead and label it HTML document. And once it's converted into JavaScript and we can actually interact with it, we call it the DOM. So we have our DOM, which is our HTML document. Now, 
Really, all browser events are actually provided to us by the web API within that browser. So we'll just say browser events, and they are provided to us by the web API. Now the cool thing is, is that we, if we go to the Mozilla, Mozilla Developer Network, and we actually look at all, the, all of the different events that we are provided by the DOM in the browser, we see that we've got a lot. We've got resource events, network events, focus events, web sockets, sessions, CSS. There are a ton of different events that we can listen for in our HTML pages through our JavaScript applications. And when those events happen, we can make sure that we respond to those events in some way based on what we need our application to do. So let's talk about the big events that we have that we may want to handle in our applications. Big ones that we use a lot if we're using or if we're building real-time JavaScript applications such as chat features or chat bots or anything like that, we're going to want to listen for web socket events. So web socket events is a really key one. Sometimes when we're building applications that involve a lot of writing and the user's ability to uh, write and manipulate text. In other words, if we're creating like a WYSIWYG editor or something like that for our application, clipboard events can be really important so we can capture clipboard events. Of course, CSS, we do all kinds of things with CSS, kind of like uh, CSS animations. We do CSS animations frequently, so that's a common thing to do. And so CSS animations have events associated with them. A lot of times in our web applications, we're going to have some form of media, such as videos or music that might be playing. So browsers actually provide us a bunch of events for media. We also do a lot of form submissions. In other words, trying to get data from the user. And so we can get all kinds of events from forms. And probably the biggest one, or the one that we use the most, are going to be mouse events. So user-initiated mouse events are the most common that we're going to use all the time. Then there are focus events. So when the browser window goes in and out of focus, that's one that, that might be used frequently. We've got keyboard events. That's probably, probably second to mouse events. So we'll want to understand how to use keyboard events. Another important one are network events that happen. So we might want to know if a network request was successful or not, if we've got connection to the network or not, items like that. Another one that's used frequently is our drag and drop events. So we'll want to know when somebody is dragging or dropping an HTML element on our page or a file onto the the browser itself. And then also resource. There's also resource events such as did our did a particular JavaScript file load, did a CSS file load, stuff like that. So all of these events surround the HTML document as well as the browser window or the browser itself, such as whether or not we have a network connection, whether or not we can get to the internet or not. But a lot of them have to do with this HTML document. And so when we're dealing with events and then event listeners, also called event handlers, you might hear me use both terms. Um, and that is because in the past, uh, at a lot of my jobs, we've called them handlers because we're handling an event. In the official documentation, they're called listeners because these are methods that subscribe to an event, and when that event happens, they listen for that event. When it happens, they then respond to that event. Either way, you can call them handlers or listeners, but you will hear both terms used for event handlers, event listeners, when you're dealing with events, when you're programming. All right, so we've got these right here. These are the events that we've got. And really, in JavaScript, what's going to happen is that we have a list of all of these events or 
each of these categories have a list of a bunch of events that we can subscribe to. And really, all this really is, is, is it's kind of a feature we like to call in programming a pub sub model. All right. So really, all we're doing is we have the browser, which is publishing events. In other words, it has a list of events that we can, that it's going to put out there every time they happen. And then we can decide whether or not we want to subscribe to those events. And really, in this kind of model of publishing and subscribing to events, really what's happening here is we are using the browser's API, so that's the web API, and it publishes those events every single time they happen. And then subscribing to the events is the responsibility of the programmer or the software developer. And so this happens within our JavaScript code. And really all we're doing is we are subscribing to these events and when these events are called out by the browser, we're gonna go ahead and do something in response to it. So one of our most common examples is going to be an HTML element. So if we have an HTML element inside of our page, and let's say it is a button. So we might have a HTML button right here. And inside of our, it sits inside of our document. So we've got our HTML document right here. We've got ourselves an HTML button. And what is going to happen is every time that button gets clicked on by a user, so we've got a user over here, and they're gonna click on that button I'm using the wrong thing there. All right, so every time they click on this button, the browser is going to call out an event. So let's say that the user clicks on this button. Oh, let's not do five times. That's going to be painful. Let's just do three times. So the button gets clicked on three times. And what's going to happen is that the browser is going to go ahead and publish to everyone that this button was clicked. And so maybe that button has an ID of main button let's go ahead and put a dollar I mean a pound sign in front of us we know it's that so main button clicked so that's going to be the event and so what's going to happen is, is each time it's pushed we're going to go ahead and it's going to tell us that main button was clicked and these are going to be events that are just going to be called out by the browser every time it happens. All right, so each time that happens. Now, if we don't have a listener or a function that we have written as the software developer to listen to these events when they happen, what simply happens is these events, each time they get called out, if there is no handler, then they just kind of disappear. Nothing happens. They just go off into the ether and they're disregarded. But they're still happening. The browser is still publishing that this event is taking place. So let's say that in our application, when it first starts up, the button gets clicked a bunch of times, but our JavaScript hasn't loaded and or we have not added a listener to this button yet. And so if we're looking at the progression of time, we're going this direction. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and label that as time. So we know that time is tracking downwards. And let's say that at some point in our program, code is written, executed, or created where we create a listener. So we've got main button and we provide a listener. And so this is of course code that we have written and it is a function specifically. Oops, let's go back to our document really quick since I exited out of it all awesome like. All right, so we've got a main button, clicked, clicked. Here's our time, 
And at some point down here, we actually have hit code where we have added a handler to that button. So let's go ahead and do that again. Main button, and we're gonna add a listener to it. So we're gonna do the click listener has been added right here at this point in time. And because we have just added a click listener to this main button, the next time that we run into this event being called out by the browser, so we'll add another one, main button clicked. When this happens next, because we have added a listener to this, what will happen is, is that our click listener code will then be executed. And that is because we have been listening for this event to happen. And in response, this click listeners code is going to be executed. So right here, we're going to end up with the click list. Oops, we want to go ahead and do this in green so we know what we're doing here. So click listener in green, in green. click listener executed and we'll do our parens after that so we know it's been executed and that listener will get executed because we've added a listener to the button right here and then when this event happens again we actually have a listener listening for it and then it will get called and executed by the JavaScript runtime now if we go back to our PDF that we had up and we see right here what happens is, is that we subscribe to that event by providing a function or listener. A lot of times we will call it like handle button click, handle select, handle mouse over, or handle click. And that event listener, what's going to happen is, is it's just going to kind of sit here. So let's demonstrate that on top of this diagram right here. We are going to have this event click and we were talking about a main button that's sitting inside of our HTML. So we're going to end up with this main button event listener and we're doing the click listener. So let's do handle click right here. And we've created that event listener right there. And it's just going to sit right here and held by our web API, it's just gonna sit here and wait. And so we have this, this event listener just sitting here. And then at some point, an event is gonna be triggered. So the user actually clicks the button inside of our HTML. This event handler or listener is gonna be pushed down onto the call stack and so it'll end up like right here at the end of this list. So we'll have a new listener right here. And it is going to be that same event listener that we had. So it's going to be the main button, handle click, listener. And it is going to sit right here. And it is going to wait its turn. And so as this call stack empties out, so let's go ahead and pretend that this call stack has emptied out. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and empty that call stack out by putting ourselves a nice block over it. Okay, so the call stack has been executed. All of these functions that we're waiting have all been executed and the call stack is now empty. So what now is going to happen is each of these event handlers right here that are waiting in the queue are each going to be put up here by the event loop. So the event loop is sitting here ticking and it is going to look into the, as soon as this call stack is empty, it is going to look into on each of its ticks. It's going to look down here into the callback queue. It's going to find a handler that is waiting. It's going to move that handler up here. So we're going to see this handle click moved up here and then it is going to remove it from the callback queue it's going to put it up here and then it is going to execute that code and then the call stack is going to be empty again. On the next tick of the event loop, it's going to go ahead and pull the next one in order. It's going to put it up here in the call stack. It's going to execute the code after it removes this, puts it up here. 
it gets executed, the code gets run that's inside of our handler or inside of our listener, and then the call stack's gonna empty again, and then it's just gonna follow that pattern that the next listener in order is gonna be put up there into the call stack to be run, it's gonna be removed from the queue, and then again, this one's gonna be moved up here to be executed, it's gonna be removed from the queue, and now our custom main button handle click is going to be moved up into the call stack. It's going to be executed and it's going to be removed from our queue until our callback queue is empty and our stack is empty. The event loop will keep ticking because it's that's just what it does. It'll keep running. It'll keep checking to see if the call stack is empty and then if it is empty, it'll check our callback queue. If it's empty, then nothing happens and it keeps ticking right along. Now the next time an event happens, let's say that our main button gets you know, ticked again, then another handler is, or another listener is gonna be put down here into the callback queue again. The event loop continues to run and so long as our call stack is empty, it's gonna do just what it did before. It's gonna take the next listener that's sitting in this callback queue, it's going to push it onto the stack, it's going to execute it and remove it from the callback queue until it's empty again. So hopefully that helps you understand how events work in the browser. And now in the next video we're going to go ahead and talk about how we actually write the code that does all of this.